Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to quickly sketch a Moscow related urban sketch. Obviously, when we talk about Moscow, it's sort of very big and seemingly not suitable for a quick sketching. But I'm just gonna do a little a little fragment of um, of Kremlin uh, and I'm going to do a Spaska tower which is the main tower uh, and it's a little bit of exercise in, in perspective which is good as well for sketching so I'm gonna start with positioning my main objects in perspective and ideally I would do it with pencil but I'm going to do it with the finest of my fine liners so I'm going to mark the the bottom <clears throat> bottom line and then I'm going to do the same with the top one and I'm going to mark my punishing point somewhere here and then it's going to be easier for us to to track it so then we have this is the wall, the end of the wall. Then we have the tower itself, which is luckily for us looks directly at us with one sign, which means it's one point perspective. And then the other one and will go here. So I, at the moment I'm just marking the main the overall um, shapes. Then it's gonna have some detailing in here. And then there is a smaller part, the tower. So I'm going to mark the invisible square on the top to find the middle because the tendency is to put the middle of the top um, part in the middle of this line and it looks always squint. So we need the actual center. So just marking the main. I think I got a bit wrong at here. I'm just going to go a little bit lower with this part. That's why it's good to do it with pencil, but it's just not visible that much. Okay. Something like that. And then there is another bit of the gate that coming forward still it's looking forward at us and then this side is gonna go like that then there is some sort of landscaping at the back uh, steps at the front trying to do a straight line without much success but that's fine that's sketching and then there is a row of evergreens here which i'm just gonna mark the top line again for the perspective purposes and then i'm going to to put in some detail with the thicker pen. So that was 0 0.1, now I'm taking 0 0.3 and just starting to fill in the details. I'm not gonna put too much, I need to really simplify it, otherwise it's gonna take ages and not gonna be that quick, sketchy feel that we want. It is a it's 
so the top of the wall and there's not much on this wall just some little details okay so this one it's a little bit more here some sort of column styles at the edges and then there is a line here which is too tall for my wall so I need to go down a little bit with my wall my wall is now gonna finish here while I'm here I'm just going to put in this top and detail very sketchy then I need to put a little bit more of the detail here and there are some small windows in there and a little bit more detail wall finishes then we have a little small little towers there which again I need to simplify so as long as I am putting the rough shapes in and try to keep my perspective going then the should be fine and then there are some other things in the middle which I can't really see what they are a little towers peaks on the edges of the tower And then the main event there where the clock is. The clock, by the way, was designed and installed by Scottish architect Christopher Galloway. So, as you see, not everything in Moscow is Russian. And actually, the tower itself, the Kremlin itself, and the tower itself, they were built by Pietro Antonio Solari, who was a Swiss architect. So again, not Russian. Some features there over the clock. Another clock here. The clock is on the clocks are on each side of the tower but this one is gonna look much smaller and just an ellipse then there is this bit here which is circular and it's got this arched features and then there is a peak at the top 
and they start. Okay, so now I'll try to go back and straighten my stairs. Uh, that's a bit better. Still not ideal. I'm just gonna go with it. And then I need to put in my evergreens here. Again, very sketchy. Just trying to make sure that the top edge of it is going to the same vanishing point. Okay, and then there is this paving on the square itself that I, I'm just going to roughly put in and I'm just going to do the same with the brick texture of the of the tower and the wall as well just a little bit Okay, and I think now I'm just going to go ahead and put in some watercolor. So I'm going to start with the sky, mix nice blue from a couple of blues that I've got here and just going to go really quickly. over my sky. I'm trying to go around the tower especially because I got all these lines here from my pen and it all looks a bit confusing so I'm just trying to separate the buildings from the background Okay, let's leave it at that. Now I need to be careful with my tower so that it doesn't run into the sky. And I think I'm going to go with a smaller brush for this because there is a bit of a white detail there that I'm ne I will need to leave blank. So. Now I need to mix um, a brick color, so I'm going with my reds, some browns in there as well, and a little bit of blue, a bit more cool red probably. I'll start and then I'll see how it looks. Okay, something like that. And because we did quite a bit in sketching with pen, I'm just going to Go in with sort of sparingly with the color and hope that it looks meant by the end of it. Just trying to leave a little bit of whites in there where detailing is on the on the tower. We could have used 
a masking liquid or something like that or even even a wax resist method that we used in the Easter card workshop but we didn't so I'm just going straight away I'll do a little bit more on this side because the other side here is in the shadow so I'll want to use a darker color for that so I already here messed up a little bit so I'm gonna wipe through with a dry brush because there is a white band in there and that's okay it's okay and everything else is actually darker than this so I'm just going to reinforce a bit my color with a little bit of a cooler version of it just give it a little bit more warmth in the shadow This here is actually going to be a little bit different because this bit, this wall is going to be in a cast shadow, so it's going to be a little bit darker. And then this, although it's in the shade overall, but it's going to be lighter because the core shadow is always lighter than the cast one. Okay, just finishing touches here on my wall on this side. So you see the benefit of doing the pen sketch first is that we don't need to go into super detail in watercolor and can leave it quite vibrant okay what else do we have here we have a green ish top it's not very bright green it's quite deep so some blues some reds some yellows and some cool greens going in there The star I'm going to leave for the for the last. And then we have sort of grayish pavement and steps. So I'm going to mix a non-descriptive gray color here with a little bit of those reds and just a little bit more for the pavement here pavement I am going to apply in a little bit of a spotty fashion just to represent the 
the stones there, the stone texture. And there is something at the back there, some landscaping. And I'm gonna finish off the the clock. It's got a golden golden frame. So I'm just going straight with my ochre color. And then the middle is black. So I need to be careful here because I don't want it to run into the yellow. So I need my brush to be quite, quite dry. Okay, I'll leave it at that for the moment, maybe wipe it a little bit because there are some golden features on the dial as well, so I probably don't want it that dark. Okay. So, just a little bit more detail I want on the, on the shadowy bit of the, of the tower. whenever there is a shadow I'm just going to add a little bit extra detail in there And also there is a cast shadow on this side. Okay. The last thing I'm going to do is my evergreens here. So, mixing nice. Nice green, not too bright, so I'm adding some contrasting colors in there so that the green is not very much in your face. Applying it overall here and then I'm going to go with a cooler and darker shade and Reinforce all of this, mixing quite dark now, quite dark, cool green color. I'm adding some cool red into it as well so that it's not too bright, more like a grayish tone. And Just going over my trees there, leaving some areas lighter and then some darker. And I think that's about as much as I am 
going to do here. And voila!